to give it a, about a minute or so. Let's everybody jump on here for the first Zoom call. You should be able to see yourself, guys, and there's three little ellipses, and you can click on the mute button, and you should see a little microphone icon that has a little slash through it, and you can mute and unmute yourself. Uh, we're going to mute everybody because there's always background noise that you may not realize, you know, ceiling fans and things like that. So get used to being able to click on unmute if you want to jump in and say something. There's also a chat feature on Zoom. So if you have questions, I'm going to try to see it. Um, I, think, I don't know if I can see mine, but I see Rochelle just said good morning in there. So uh, that's what we're going to work with, okay? So let me just make sure everyone's muted. All right, so someone test out unmuting yourself and make sure we can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How you doing, Rochelle? I'm great. How are you? Doing well. Good. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Kyle, you're in a conference room with several uh, Richmond West people. Awesome. Hello, Richmond. Good to see you. You can't see us, but thanks. <laughs> I see Cheryl's beautiful name on the screen. All right, well, let's rock and roll. All right, so what you're gonna do is if you have a question, I'll pause and ask for questions. Um, I am recording this right now, so we will post it. Uh, I obviously have my camera here and I'm looking at a bigger screen over on this side so that we can see everybody. So, hey, Samuel, I see you over there. Beth, Tanya, hope everyone's having a good day. So um, don't do anything on camera that you don't want on video because your faces are gonna be in some of these different shots. So <laughs> if you don't want your face on there, you can certainly mute um, your face or your video, but love seeing faces makes it more fun, more interactive. All right, guys, so we're gonna talk about designs, uh, which is one of the uh, applets within command. And so hopefully everyone can see my screen in the background for command. Can you shake your head yes if you can see my command screen? Samuel, you're the only person that has their camera on right now that I can see. Tanya, yes, okay, good. All right, so we're gonna see my command screen here. We're not gonna start from the very beginning. We're obviously gonna focus on designs today. So does anyone uh, wanna turn on their microphone and say whether or not they've used designs, any successes, any uh, difficulties that we can make sure we talk about today? Nope. Okay. All right, so I wanna show you a couple different things before we jump in and get started inside of designs, all right? And one of those things is everyone, except for Leesburg, I think right now, has all of their logos inside of KW Marketing. You can download a zip form and get all the different logos for your market center. So we're gonna start there today, just where you go and download that zip form. Um, and then we'll go back into command and we'll, we'll actually show you how we're going to use some of those different tools. Okay. So to get your market center logos, and again, you're going to need these when you do marketing materials, because in Virginia, uh, where we're all located, there's obviously disclosure. We have to do our marketing materials. And one of them is we have to put the firm name on there. You can either type out the firm name or you can use the logo if it says your full, your full market center. So my market center is Tell Wings Fairfax Gateway. So if we can use that logo, it's gonna help you with your compliance. All right, so to get there, we're actually gonna to go to kwconnect.com, right? So kwconnect.com, which is one of the learning platforms in KW. It's the same login as all your other Keller Williams technology products, okay? So the same, same for everything. Up here, uh, I believe it is underneath of, let me just make sure, I think they moved it the other day actually. Let's see. Actually, I'm just gonna search. Let's see if we can just search logos and graphics. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Let's start with MyKW. They moved this button around. So let's start with MyKW, eEdge login. Right, most of these should be the same username and password, should look familiar. Let's get logged into eEdge. Remember, I'm recording this, so you can go back and watch if you'd like to. So in eEdge, up top here, you see a marketing tab. You click on that marketing tab, it's gonna take you back over to KW Connect. This was the page I was trying to get to. And the very first box in the upper left-hand corner here is logos and branding. You can go ahead and click on that box. Everyone's gonna follow these same steps. And the next step is where we're gonna pick our market center. So if you scroll down a little bit here, you're gonna see in the middle section here, it says market center logos. And below that, 
it says search market center number or market center name. So I can go in here and type in Fairfax Gateway. When I do type that in, you should see a market center number, the market center, and then a download button. Here's the preview. So this is what it's gonna look like, right? It's the Keller Williams uh, Fairfax Gateway logo. All right, now when I download this zip file, it's gonna give me the logo in this color scheme. It'll be PNGs and JPEGs, which we're gonna talk about here in just a few minutes. It could be the all white KW logo. So instead of it being red and gray, all the text is white and you can lay that over top of a darker background, right? So let's go back. That was just the preview. And again, right back down here, Fairfax Gateway. And I'm gonna click download and that's gonna download a zip form, right? Or a, a zip file with all my logos in there. All right, we have submitted it for KW Leesburg. I know you guys have at least one logo the other five market centers, you should have the entire zip file of all of your logos. All right, so before you even get into designs, I'm gonna suggest you go in there, download the zip file, put it on your desktop, and that way we can pull in some of these logos for these different marketing materials. Any questions on that? All good, okay. All right, so let's go back over to command. So we're gonna start in command, and we're gonna be in the designs applet over here on the left-hand side. All right, so let's click on designs. Now this screen may look a little bit different uh, for some of us, okay? I have created designs and marketing materials and that's why you see those things here. If you click on designs up here, this little easel, as long as you see my design templates and this header up here, you're in the right spot, okay? Uh, this is where you're gonna come to create not only emails, uh, you'll be able to create marketing templates like in MailChimp, right? So there'll be email templates in here. You'll have website templates in here to work off of. We're gonna focus on social and print today, okay, in these marketing materials. So this is where we're gonna start. In the bottom right-hand corner, everyone should see a little plus button, right? Give me a nod if you see that plus button. Let's just make sure we're all on the same page. Very good. Click on the plus button and this little screen pops up. This is different, this is a change than the way we've been teaching it. So now you have social or print, and I'm gonna focus on these two libraries right now. Uh, before you would just click one of those and you'd continue on to a new screen. Now, if you would like to connect your marketing materials to a listing, you're gonna check this button. If you don't check this button, it won't prompt you any longer to look for an MLS listing. It'll just bypass that entirely and go into the marketing designs, right? So before we had to, we had to click the next button and then we click a little X up here if we don't wanna use that. They changed this, I like this better. So I'm gonna use a listing. A lot of us have listings, and I'll, I'll use another example later. So let's do social. We're going to start with social. So I click on social, and I check on that I'd like to import photos and text from one of my listings. And then I can click on create template. Right? Once I click that box, now this pop-out shows up. Okay? Uh, originally, this would just pop up automatically. Now this pop-up will only pop up if you check that checkbox we just clicked on. Right, so over here you have a drop down that says all listings or only my listings. This is uh, being improved, okay, and it's not perfect yet. So when I drop down here and go to only my listings, right, there is one right here, which is one of my old listings that we rented out. Um, if your listings aren't here, they are probably in the system up here in the search box. So what you're gonna wanna do is click on only my listings, switch that to all listings, and then search for your property address. Okay, so as an example, I'm gonna type in my property that I bought last year that I renovated. Um, and so you should be able to find older properties in here as well. And so once I start typing in the address of the house, here is the listing, right? Which was by a Keller Williams agent. I also wanna point out here um, that if you maybe sold a listing, right? If you had a buyer that maybe per purchased a listing, you can also go in and find listings right, from, uh, from other companies. So this is pulling on all listings from all MLSs, not just Keller Williams agents, right? So if I wanna use this listing and the photos and the details that come along with it, I'm gonna click select. And when I do, it's now gonna open up uh, the actual WeBrand uh, screen, which should look like this. If you guys are following along with me at home, it may have asked you to sign in, right? There's kind of a, a sign in block that happens there. Go ahead and sign in. Make sure you click on the save username button so that it doesn't ask you every single time you log in. Okay, 
Once you get past that screen, you should be at a screen like this. I have some leadership uh, uh, templates over here. Uh, you guys definitely are going to have some of these down here. So you should see things like just listed, just sold, right? Um, local expert, right? All these different graphics should be here. And remember, we're in the social side. So because we're in the social side, we have Facebook, Instagram, Instagram stories, LinkedIn, and Twitter. If you were looking to make a postcard or a flyer, you'd want to, you would want to have clicked on print where we clicked on social. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so I see a couple chats over here. Let me just pull this up. Uh, Baby Watch is going good. Which course, command open is correct. Uh, take notes. Okay. So here's the deal. I saw someone said, hey, mine just says Instagram. So depending on the different uh, template you select, right, or subject, I guess I would say, these are going to change with what type of marketing materials are available for this subject. So if I click on just listed, we all should see, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram stories, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Okay. Now these are obviously maximized for the social media network, meaning that the size is exactly what it's supposed to be. Right. So I have Facebook here, which is the, uh, the rectangular shape, or if I went to Instagram, obviously it's more of a square Instagram stories, take up your entire cell phone. So that's why you're going to see the long rectangular one there for the Instagram stories. Okay, so uh, I would like to point out, these are not all property specific marketing materials, right? You have different things in here that you could use, um, including things like client testimonial. So if you've gotten some great testimonials from one of your clients and you'd like to be able to copy and paste that testimonial into a really nice graphic, you could certainly do that right here, right? Um, in the, the other side, let's see, there's also some in here for business basics is another subject in here. You have things like Facebook cover photos, LinkedIn cover photos. In addition, they also have an email signature in here that you could customize if you'd like to. On the print side, there are things like business cards um, and other materials. So again, don't think that it's just marketing specific materials. Now, let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna make a piece of marketing material. All right, so let's go ahead and pick um, just listed. And the very first thing you're going to do, if you've not been in here to designs yet, is in the bottom right here, and you're going to see this on the next screen as well, so you can get to this from the next screen, you're going to click on add to library. All right, so let me click on add to library. You have the opportunity here to go in one time and type in all your information and then also upload your headshots and your logos so that they're available for you to just drag and drop when you need them for all your different materials. So think of this as a master place where you're saving all those one time, and then you can use them on all the different marketing materials. So I put in some information about um, my company details. Over here, you can see I've uploaded a couple headshots. And then again, I have the opportunity to upgrade or upload a couple different logos. Now, if you'd like to upload, a new, yeah. if you'd like to upload a new logo, okay, you're going to click on this plus button right here. And it'll ask you to select that logo from your computer. This, I just want to show you, is the white KW Fairfax Gateway logo. So it does not look like there's anything there, but there actually is a logo there. You just can't see it because it's white on white background. And I'll show you how I'm going to use that logo in just a few minutes. So make sure you go in and at least put in your headshots or your logos. One of your headshots should come through from your marketing profile in command. And hopefully it has. If not, just take a couple minutes, upload them once, and then they're always there for you to use. Okay, and then once you do that, you can click back out. All right, so let's make a marketing piece. Let's say we're going to create this Facebook just listed graphic. All right, if I like the way it looks here, I'm gonna click on use. Once I do that, that's gonna open up the actual editing tool. So step one is to just look at the different graphics, see which one you like design wise. Once you choose the one you actually want to create and customize, then you're going to click on that little button that says use. All right. Now I'm going to zoom my screen out just a little bit here. Um, let's see if you see the whole piece. Move you guys real quick. And wrong direction. Screwed up the screen. Yep. 
There we go. Okay. All right. So uh, this is what it looks like. So this is the graphic that I would like to edit, right? And over here, you have a couple different tabs. So let's go down these tabs. The first is going to be images. And under my library over here, that is where you're seeing the ones that you uploaded into your library. You can also access your library by clicking this button right here, add a library and add some more. Next to that are company images. So KW has uploaded some stock photos for you to use. So there's this whole library right here of stock photos, right? So again, so working from right to left, you have your library first, followed by company. And then you can also upload any photo that you want to from your computer by clicking on upload an image right here. So this is unlimited. Uh, what I'm trying to explain here is, is you don't need the connection to the MLS to have all of your listing photos. As an example, if you're having a coming soon listing and you like to create materials for it, but you haven't listed it yet on the MLS for the KWLS, you can simply just go to the add section of images and upload your pictures here. And then you have a little library down here that you can then use to drag and drop over into this section to create the material. Okay. Second one down is text. It's the same thing. So this is the information that I typed in about myself. And so they're just little quick little buttons I could click on if I wanted to pull over my website onto a marquee. So as an example, if I just clicked here, right, it'll actually pull the number in and I can move this down here and open this up if I want to. So it's kind of just, it's a, a short, short key, if you will. Next to it, you have company, right? And then under company here, you have a few different texts here, including every office independently owned and operated. This is a really cool one. So this is banners. Anyone that's ever used Canva before has also seen something like this. They have all these different texts uh, that are already created for you uh, in different fonts. And if I wanted to use one, I could simply just click on the graphic and it would pull it over here onto my page, right? And so I could actually just pull this whole thing up if I wanted to, I can make it smaller. And now I can go in and actually customize this. Right, so there's all these great little texts over here. I could delete out just listed if I wanted to and pull this text up and make that much bigger. So just go check out these over here. They are, they're really cool. You could use them for open houses or you know, you had a material over here that maybe was top 10 reasons to sell this spring. You can maybe you know, edit this graphic to say something along that. And once you're done with it or if you don't want it in there, you can just highlight that graphic and click the delete button or backspace on your computer and it'll come off of your marketing piece. All right. And same thing here, you can add text, title, subtitle, body text. Once I bring in a text, right over here where it says title, I have the ability obviously to edit this and you know, change it to something like open house. In addition to that, you can also highlight it. And when you do, you have the option of changing the font of the text. So you have a full font library over here to choose from. And you can obviously change um, the size of the font. Right. So all of this is fully customizable. That's basically what I'm getting at here. Right. So let me go ahead and delete that one out as well. Okay, so here's our graphics. So that was images now we've done, text, icons over here, a um, couple different icons that they have, shapes. You know, these are all, you can use all these. So you have things like Facebook or Instagram. You can pull these logos over into your marketing piece if you wanted to as well. Right? You might want to combine an icon and text. So you can bring in the Facebook graphic and shrink it down if you wanted to and put it somewhere in your marketing piece, right? And pull this over, oh, pull this picture over, right? Pull that little graphic over and drop it somewhere else. So lots of different options over here with the logos. The last one guys is KWLS, all right? So when I click on KWLS, because I selected a listing in the very beginning, I am now gonna see all of the photos from that MLS listing pulled into this little library for me. And, now I have the option of just dragging and dropping one of these photos, see how I did that? Into the marketing material. So if I wanted to highlight the kitchen, this is what our kitchen looked like beforehand, nothing to highlight, I could drop it in there, okay? And if I said, oh, you know what, I really don't like that, let me change it to something else. Uh, you could go over here and say, let me pull in the, the front of the house and drop it in. So it's a really, a really fun feature of just dragging and dropping. If you simply click on one of the pictures, it won't drag and drop and replace. It'll bring the picture in on top of it. Um, and then you can maneuver it around from there. All right. Here's my Facebook graphic. So let me move that out of the way. That shouldn't be on top of the, of the photo. Okay. All right. Let me stop here for a second. Uh, remember, guys, if you're on Zoom, I've muted you. 
If you'd like to ask a question, please make sure that you unmute yourself. Let's stop here and just see what questions you have up until this point, and then we'll go back to, to working on the marketing piece. Anybody have questions? Hi, Kyle. This is Nina. Hey, how are you? Good. Hey, Kyle. Like when you went to the text, there were some text uh, like the company address and uh, those things. They were already there. So how did you uh, like how how do you create those? Okay, so you're talking about here under text where I've got all this yeah. right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so under add to library. Oh, okay. We had looked at images and logos, mm -hmm. right? Right here. Oh, and there's there's additional one here for details, all right? So once I fill out all my details, mm -hmm. that is then what's going to be pulled in over here next to text. Got it. Got it. Okay, thanks. Great question. Who else? Everybody else okay? All right, let's continue moving forward. Uh, let me just check the chat feature here real fast. Make sure I didn't miss anything on the chat. I don't see anything there. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so um, I bring that in. Now, I want to show you another feature here. So once I click on KWLS, I have all the listing pictures. There are some listing details here, right? So if I wanted to maybe click on the address, I could bring the address in. Right now, it's not automatically replacing on the material like where it says 000 street name. Right? We would have to actually delete this box out and actually bring in the address or edit this for the address. So I could click on this box and type in you know, 404 Dale Road. Okay. In the future, it'll take these details from the MLS and auto populate it into the section where it's supposed to be. So you have a couple extra steps right now. I still think it's a really great tool, but realize that some of these things in the next version will be enhanced to make it even easier. All right. Now, uh, let's continue. I'm going to go back up here to images and I'd like to show you how you can potentially bring in uh, a headshot. All right. So I can square this up over here. I'm going to delete this Facebook for a moment. Okay. Delete the Facebook. Now, when I'm on the graphic and I'm not clicked in on anything, so I just want to point this out. If I'm clicked on just like I'm going to edit this text, I have a little toolbar up here that gives me all these details about how I can edit this text. If I click off of one of these boxes, all right, then I should get a new bar up here that says drawing shapes, frames, or text. So to make sure to get this toolbox up here, just click off into this little gray area and you should see these four buttons up top. Now, shapes, right? Shapes are these right here, right? Simple shapes. So if you wanted to, you know, put a star in there for some reason or whatever, right? There is, there's your shape. When you pull in a shape, and this is the same for photos, you're going to see a little graphic down here. This is the way if you grab this, you can turn the star. Okay, so you can turn the star or turn it any way you want to. In addition to that, when I click on the star, you're going to see a little toolbox up here that allows me to edit the star. Okay, so the first one is going to allow me to change the opacity. So it's a solid star right now, but if I wanted to kind of make it a, a little ghost over here in the background, right, the ghost star, I could change the opacity. So I can see through the star. Right, I can still see the house through the star. If I wanted to change the color of the star, I could click on this middle one here and I could change the color. So maybe I wanted it red, right? Okay, so now I've got a red star, right? I could maybe overlay text on this that says, join me for my open house on Saturday or you know, for whatever reason, right? So those are your options with some of the different shapes. Now again, I'm gonna delete this shape. Another one I like though, next to shapes is called frames. This is meant for pictures and photos. If I click frames, they give me these different options. Some of them do not have borders. So as an example, if I brought in this little, this one here, right, this is what we call a frame. It's called an image placeholder. I can shrink this, right? So just like anything else, I can pull and drag and drop and shrink this. I can move it up here into the, into the graphic, maybe where I want it. And now since this is a frame, going back over to my images, right, into my library, same thing, I can now drag and drop my headshot into the frame. Okay, so you see how it just framed me out there in that little circle. Now this one doesn't have a border, right? So there are some frames, if you scroll down, there are some, some ones in here that have these different frames. So if I wanted to maybe use this one, show you the difference, All right? I could scroll this one down. Now everything in here is editable, guys. So when I click on this graphic, you'll see I get the little toolbar up here to edit this graphic again. The orange is the default, right? Now if I wanted to, I could change that to black. And then again, it's a photo frame. So because it's a photo frame, I can now drag and drop, 
right? My headshot into that photo frame, right? And then you can move that around and decide, you know, where you'd like to have that, have that photo frame there. So my background of my photo is black. So I don't like that. So I might change that and say, hey, make the background red. All right, see how I did that? So those are your frames and your shapes. You could obviously add text from up here as well. So if I needed a quick little thing of text, I could click on body text. It'll come in for me and now I can move that text around to on the page wherever I would like it to be. Okay. Any questions on that? Let's go ahead and take another pause. Any questions on this top little uh, library up top here, this little toolbar, any questions on that? Okay. You guys learning something? All right, let's keep going then. So let us uh, let me show you a cool little tool. Uh, I've showed this in my boot camps or in the class I just finished up going around. Um, I don't think I did it in Richmond yesterday, actually. Um, there's a really cool tool out there called remove.bg. It's a website. So Kyle, if you go, yes. Sorry to interrupt. Tanya said her mic's not working, but she has questions. Okay, uh, let's see, Tanya in the chat. Can we edit the colors of the existing banners? My audio is not working, I have questions. Okay, so let me go back before we move forward. Pull the chat up over here. Uh, so Tanya, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about maybe something like this back here where it's red. Let me see if I can pull up the space. All right, Tanya, I'm, I'm gonna put you in my screen. All right, are you talking about this little red box up top here? Okay, perfect. So yes, so once I click on this little red box up here, I get my little toolbar. Right, and so I can go here and it's defaulted to red. And if I wanted to change that to blue, I could change it to blue. Right, if I wanted to come down here and change this to blue, I could also change that to blue as well. All right. Now, I'm not exactly sure, I haven't done this yet. Down here in library, you do have something called brand kit where you can select certain colors. And I'm not sure, Tanya, but I do think if you select certain colors here, they will become the default colors of your marketing pieces. So if you have a certain color scheme for your brand, I might encourage you to go ahead and try that. Okay. All right, can we edit the colors of the existing banners? My audio doesn't work. Uh, uh, I think we're just gonna start. Perfect. Okay. All right, so let's go back to this other one real fast and I'll come back to some of these questions. So great website called remove, R-E-M-O-V-E dot B-G. You guys can see it there, remove dot B-G. What this does is it removes the background out of a photo. So I'm gonna go back here and let me move you guys out of the way. Let's talk for a second about the difference between PNGs and JPEGs and then we're gonna go back to this remove background. So if I go to my logos here, you can see I have two different logos. One is a PNG, one is a JPEG. The difference between them is a PNG has no background meaning I can click on this photo, right, and bring this in and I can overlay it on top of a marketing piece, right? A JPEG, the background is static, meaning that the white space will always be there. You can't edit that out, all right? So if I was creating this marketing piece and I wanted to put my logo on it and I was either using this one or with this one, I think one looks much better than the other, which is gonna be your PNG. So if you can eliminate the background out of photos, it's gonna give you a more desirable looking marketing piece. All right, so your logos that I showed you in the very beginning have these files, the PNG files, and all the different color schemes. Red, black, gray. So you know, if you wanted a black one to go over top of the garage, right, you can do some funny things on your marketing pieces, you can do that if you want to. Okay, remove.bg, what this allows you to do is select a photo from your computer and it will actually remove the background. So when I pull in, this is a good example, when I pull in this photo, right, it wouldn't have this actual background here, it would allow me to drop this photo on top of my marketing piece. So if I go up here to select a photo and I go in here to pictures, and I'm sure it's ones we have in here, right, and I click on, let's do Leroy, and I open up Leroy's picture, it says preparing to upload. This is a free service. And what it'll do is it'll remove the background in Leroy's photo. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to download 
this new file that this website has created for me. So I click download and just saved right here on my computer. Now, I'm gonna go back over to WeBrand. Let's say this was a picture of me and I wanted to use this picture, right, on my marketing piece. So I'm gonna do that by clicking on images and then add an image from my computer, right, because I just saved that image to my computer. So I'll click on drag and drop here. So I can drag and drop this from my downloads right into this box, or I can click on this box and it'll allow me to pick it from one of my folders. Okay, now I brought in the picture and there it is. So now you can see Leroy and I click on Leroy and you can see now there's no background to this photo. So I can now shrink this photo and maybe add this somewhere into the marketing piece, right? Like down here, if you wanted to do something like that. Okay, so it's just kind of a cool little tool just to show you how to take backgrounds out of photos so you could use them in your marketing pieces if you wanted to. All right, stop there. Any questions on removing the background of the photo or the difference between a PNG and a JPEG? Everybody good? Pull back up the chat. Everyone looks good there. All right. So I'm going to delete this out, right? I don't like that photo, but maybe it's a little picture of Leroy down here. 404 Dale Road, right? Just listed if I wanted to. Now, up top here, it says KWDBA name, and I'm going to change this, right? Because that's not, that's not my logo. This isn't a logo that I want. So I can select the logo and click delete, right? And now I need to bring in my logo. So I'm going to do that by clicking on the logo tab. And again, now I have Hell Lynch Fairfax Gateway up top here. So I can pull it in. I can click on it. You can see it'll, it'll drag it in. I'll make it a little bit smaller and I'll fit the box up here. There's my Hell Lynch Fairfax Gateway logo. Right? And because again, it's a PNG, it'll pull in the, the blue background rather than this outline of this box being white on the inside. Now, I don't like the blue. So I'm going to change the blue. Let's just go back to red. Go down here, go back to red over here. And there you go. So you have a couple options at this point. Um, one more tool actually I wanna show you before we get out of this little piece here. Let's go back down to KWLS, all right? And when you first click on KWLS, it's underneath of this little listing tab. This is kind of a hidden feature. It's under the listing tab um, and the photos populate. But if you go back, there's also a second tab up here called snapshots. Okay, so I'm under KWLS. I hit back and then I should see listing or snapshots. And now I can click on snapshots. What this allows me to do is I can type in the neighborhood name. So I'm gonna type in Hillendale, Maryland, and I can click search. So this is a neighborhood search, not a zip code search at this time. And I'm gonna look in here real quick and there's actually the neighborhood. So Hillendale Crane West in Millersville, Maryland. All right, and if I select this neighborhood from here, it'll actually give me two little graphics that I can pull in onto the social media graphic. It'll give me a square one, or it gives me this little, almost like a door hanger, long rectangular shape. Now, what's happening here is, is in real time, KW is going and looking at the neighborhood boundaries and figuring out all the real estate stats and auto-populating these graphics for you. So if I click on Hillendale Crane West, it's gonna give me these options of these two graphics. Let me say I wanna use this one. I could click on this. Let's grab this one. Right, I could click on this graphic and it pulls over onto my piece. Right, now I don't have this formatted properly to have something like this on here, but I can move some things around. Move over just listed maybe and then I can put the stats up in the upper right hand corner if I wanted to. Right now, I gotta make sure I can see it, and I know this is not ideal. Let me blow it up so you can see what it looks like. So this graphic that's auto-created for you has the name of the neighborhood in this little bubble here in the highlighted section in blue. You can actually see the outline of the neighborhood. It's gonna figure out what the average listing price is, the average sold price, any active listings pending, average days on market, and square footage. Now, this is correct for this neighborhood. I actually verified this this morning because I knew we were gonna go through this. Uh, this information is what's being cleaned up right now through that entire listings tab and making sure everything's working properly. So if this doesn't look right, don't use it. But as we move forward, hopefully all this data 
uh, is looking correct. But I know for a fact in my neighborhood right now, we have two active listings. There is nothing pending. This was the days on market, and this is definitely the, the average listing price of those two of those two houses. Okay. So just realize in KWLS, next to listing under snapshots, there's these great little market updates that might be a benefit to you depending on the types of materials you're going to use. Think about it this way: if you're doing um, if you're doing walking a neighborhood maybe for an open house, and you have a postcard, maybe on one side is information about the the listing that you're holding open. On the back of the postcard is all the neighborhood stats. And all you have to do is just pull in that graphic. You don't even have to go look at the MLS and figure out what those stats are. Okay? So images, text, icons, logos, and KWLS. We went through all five of those different tabs. Now, let's say I'm happy with this marketing piece. This is what I would like to use. You have a couple options up top here. The best option right now is to download this graphic. And because remember, this is a Facebook graphic, right? So I'm either gonna get a JPEG or a PNG. Facebook does not allow you to upload as a photo a PDF. You can upload PDFs as files, but again, you cannot upload them right onto your Facebook post as a picture. All right, so get JPEG, get PNG. Make sure you're in the highest quality possible, right? Your file might be a little bit bigger, but it's a little more high quality and then I can hit start download, right? And it'll actually go ahead and download this graphic for me. All right? Up top here, there is a share button, but I'd like to point out right now, if you click share and you go to Facebook, that it doesn't look like you post it. It's a link that WeBrand posts on your Facebook page. This is not my preferred method right now because it makes it look like for the consumer, they should be able to click on that listing and it's going to take them to a website or help them see more photos. And actually all it does is just opens up a new web browser with just this photo in it. So you can do it this way, but I suggest downloading the photo and then uploading it into Facebook just like you would anything else. Okay. All right. Any questions up until this point? Let me check the chat. One. Are we able to crop or resize photos from the MLS site? Yep. So if I click on this actual photo here, Tanya, um, I could change the size of this picture. Um, you can also, I do believe up top here, there is an editing tool where you can edit uh, the size of this and how you want it to show up inside of the box. So it's not fully customizable, croppable, but if that's the way I wanted to do it there and have that be the graphic, then I can crop it that way as well. So but yes, there are some things you can do here too crop and to maneuver your, your photos. Hi Kyle, how do I, how do we put it on the back side? Like, what's that? If we have to create a two sided uh, postcard, so how do we go to the back side kind of thing? Okay, so remember, what kind of graphic are we creating here? Uh, we are creating, like you mentioned that if we have to send the flyers in the neighborhood with the stats on the back. Yep. So what I'm saying is what kind of graphic are we creating right here, right now? We're creating one for a social media platform, not for print. Exactly, oh, yeah. right? So because this is a social media graphic, we only have one side. Okay, okay. Got, got When we go into the print side, all of your print materials, if they're postcards, they will have two sides. All right, and I'll show you what that's gonna look like in just a second. So remember, social does not have two sides. Okay, thanks. Okay, now you can go up here and you can name this design. So I could call this uh, 404 Dale Road if I wanted to. All right, and then I can go over here and click on saved, right? And it'll go ahead and save that 404 Dale Road. Now, once I'm done, I could click done here, and it's gonna take me back over into command, into the design section. And now, because I created that graphic, now you're gonna see the graphic that you just created pop up over here underneath of my design templates. And if I needed to further edit this graphic, or I wanted to go back in and edit it again, I could click it and it's gonna take me right back into the editing tool. Now, one question I get, and it's not here yet, and I've heard it's coming very soon and it should be up here in these three little ellipses. Let's say you create a social media graphic that you really like, um, and it's got your headshot on there, it's got everything you want, and, and you wanna be able to just duplicate this marketing material and change the picture and change the address. All right, right now you can't do that. So if I click on this and I open it back up again, I can edit this, but it will not save this original copy. 
So if I take a new listing three weeks from now, I could click on this, right? Open it back up in the editor, change the address that is on the marketing material to my new listing. Okay, so I could come over here, right? So it should still have all of the same graphics in there. I could simply come over here, maybe change the address of the property, right? And then I could come over here to KWLS under listing. You can search for your new listing, right? So I could come in here and say, you know, Columbia Pike, right? If that was my new listing or something along those lines. See if you can find your listing. If you can, you can then select the listing. That's a bad one because it just looks like it's land. Right, but you can select that listing and now you can just drag and drop and replace, right? And now you have a new graphic with a new address and you just open it save. And now you have, you know, 505 Columbia Pike, you know, that, that social media graphic is done, all right? So that's kind of your workaround right now for, for reusing ones, but there should be a duplication button coming very soon, all right? Where we won't lose that original copy and we can just recreate it, recreate it, recreate it. Okay, questions at all guys? See some in the chat. So the chat. Um, are we going to crop Rosas? Are market stats still single family and townhouses together? We need to get stats for just single family. Yeah. So actually, right now they are, I believe, just single family. Uh, Jeanette, they are layering in townhouses, condos, apartments. But those, that information obviously has skewed the numbers. Um, they're they're working their way through this data, making sure it's all correct. That's a big reason why the websites were delayed because the data just was not 100% accurate. Uh, so again, if it's not accurate, don't use that graphic because you can't, right now you can't edit that graphic. Okay. All right, so um, again, back to the beginning here. So let me get back out of here and we're gonna be back in command designs again. Okay. All right, so let's just run through again. Plus button and let's go do print. All right, so if I click on print and I do not click on this button here, it'll just take me right into WeBring. It will not ask me to select a listing. Remember, if you skip that step like we just did, if we didn't select a listing, you can still select it when you go into the editor. So it's not required to select a listing from the beginning. You will still be able to do that further on. They're just trying to make sure you know they have it if you want to be doing that specifically for that listing. All right, so here's the print side. Business basics, we have things like emails, uh, sorry, business cards, uh, business card portraits, it looks like, for the other side. And they've got letterhead in here as well. Client love, so they have some thank you cards in here that you could use. They have event invitations, door hangers, flyers, postcards. Okay. Um, local expert, again, they've got some really good, uh, if you're trying to create a you know, market update flyer or something for an open house, um, they've got some, some good ones in here for that as well. All right. Market snaps. These are neighborhood specific flyers, not house specific flyers, where you're using those stats we just saw, right? So this could say, um, uh, your market is on the move. This could all be about uh, Lansdowne as an example, right? It could be a picture of a house in Lansdowne and all the stats about Lansdowne and then you could edit this information um, talking about some of the features of the neighborhood, upcoming events, something along those lines. The one everyone's been asking for is now here which is listing presentations. So again, we're on the print side, and now you have two different listing presentations that you can choose from, right? So I could go in here and click on use. This one is 27 pages long, all right? Uh, I have not figured out a way yet to delete a page. Uh, there are a few pages in here that I probably wouldn't use if I was actually going and doing a listing presentation. The workaround there is when you download it, you can print certain pages, right? So you have to write down the pages you want to print out of the 27, but check this out. This is very, very cool. Uh, down at the bottom, because there's multiple pages, you'll see this little drop down. And if I wanted to go to page two, right, I could just click on that page. These first two pages are just an introduction uh, for you, the agent, and the listing presentation actually starts on page three. So I could click this little drop down here, and you can see I've got uh, something here that I could edit. So I can go in here and change the names, right? So I can go in here and say, this presentation is designed for, you know, Tim and Chris Holleran, whatever it's gonna be. You can zoom in down here. In the bottom right corner, you're gonna see a little zoom button. So you can zoom in down here. 
you can get a little bit closer. And it says a custom consultation exclusively prepared for. Again, I can come in here and edit all these names. I could change that photo right there if I wanted to. Okay. There's too much text there. Remember, this whole text box is editable. So all you're going to do is select the box, and it'll allow you to pull it out a little bit, and then there's the whole name. All right, and I can come here and say Halloran. And then down below here, right, I could have my headshot. So this is a frame, remember? So because I already have my headshot in my library, now all I have to do is just drag and drop my headshot and drop it inside that frame. Fix this information here. Everything looks good. Right down here at the bottom, it says pages. And I can click this button and say, let's go to the next page. So you're going to go through each one of these pages. All right. And I went through them all yesterday. Um, there are some great ones in here. There are some social media strategies. There are some uh, pages in here that talk about where buyers are looking for homes and how Keller Williams is helping you with technology. Check this out. These are comparable properties, right? This is a comparable property sheet. So if I zoom in here a little bit, right? I've got the comps. So remember, I can go over here to KWLS and under listing, I can search for any listing. So if I wanted to pull in four comps into this listing presentation, I could go in and type in 400 Dale Road, right, Millersville, Maryland, and see if I can find that listing. All right, and there it is right there. So I can click select, and these are all frames, remember. So if this was a comp, I could pull this picture in and drop it in the frame, and then change this to 404 Dale Road and put in the comps. On this picture, I can now go and say, okay, I know 400 Dale Road just sold, Right, and that's also gonna be a comp, so I can search for that property, right, and see if I can find it. So let's go back, so I'll say 400, Dale Road, all right, there it is right there, 400, so I can click on select, and then I get all the photos from 400 Dale Road, and now I can drag and drop this photo into the second box, right, so this is a great way to be able to quickly pull in the photos and then again, it'll auto-populate the details at some point. This is manual, but think about how easy this could be if you're gonna go create your listing presentation. So that's an example of how you could use the connection to the MLS uh, to create this great little presentation. All right, continue forward a couple different pages. Uh, your needs come first. Some of these you've seen before in our older listing presentations, maybe just updated. This one's all about the process, right? So a great little graphic here that you can show your sellers and say, Hey, here's the process. We're going to meet, we're going to have a listing appointment. All these are editable. So if you wanted to change any of these different check boxes, you could certainly do that. All right, so you guys get the point. So this is the listing presentation. So remember, it's not just for marketing your properties, right? Finding your buyer. They've got great little graphics here about how people find, find a buyer in the internet. And then the next couple pages are all about, you know, how you are going to position this home on the internet property. Right, so they have this great page here, best in class promotional assets. What are all these? Right, these are all the social media graphics that we just looked at on the social side of designs. So they're hey, starting to start to tie all these things together. Kyle, I have a quick question. Yep. Let's say you um, let's say you go to page seven for that for where the comparables are or whatever, and you upload three photos, whatever. Yep. And then you and then you jump over to page thirteen. Does it mm -hmm. auto save what you did on seven? It does. It stays there. You can just move along. Okay. Correct. Course. Right. Yep. Yep. This is actually starting to save um, almost every single character you do, almost like Google Drive. Okay. So that if you ever get stuck, or you know, we've all been there before, where it times out, right? We're like, what just happened? Uh, so actually, this should be saving as you're going, right? So oh, save. Got to hit save, and that should be for all the characters as well, guys. I've I've been making a marketing material and then get kicked out, and I'm like, what just happened? And then I go back and I look, and it's saved up until the moment I got kicked out. So it's a good question. All right, any other questions on the listing presentation, guys? All right, let me just go back here. Um, I'll say don't save. So that's the listing presentation. Again, remember they have um, some of those other materials in there as well, right? Business letterheads. So let's look at a postcard real quick. So just sold. I've got postcards here for just sold. You know, this one's kind of the same theme we've been looking at. And again, at the bottom, just like we looked at in the listing presentation, going to page to page, if it has a front and a back, you're going to see that in the same spot, right? That'll, it'll say front and back. So here comes our editor. Here's our postcard. 
And then down here at the bottom, you can see it pops up and it says pages one and two, All right? So that's the front of your postcard. You know, here's the back of your postcard. Now in the future guys, uh, and in the near future, actually, you'll be able to actually post your marketing piece right here. So this was the social side. We'd be able to actually share this, uh, the social media graphic directly into our Facebook. So instead of we brand posting it, it'll be a connection to your Facebook uh, directly and we'll be able to post it there. There are some other features of command, including a, a social media scheduler that some of you guys have seen in my classes where I could take this social media graphic. I know this one's a postcard, but if it was a social media graphic, I could schedule it um, through command on my Facebook page for Friday, right? So if I knew we were gonna have an open house on Saturday, I could actually create this on Monday and then move it into the scheduler, the campaigns section of command and run it from there. In addition, I should be able to take these print materials and send them directly to a printer. So Real Mailers is a printer that's involved with us right now. That whole thing is gonna get an upgrade. And what you can actually do is you can target based on income levels, how long people have lived. So if I created a postcard here, a just sold postcard, I would actually be able to pick which neighbors do I want this postcard to go to. Now you guys have to pay for you know, the printing and the mailing, uh, but everything should be integrated. You shouldn't have to go into Canva, create your marketing piece, download it onto your computer, send it to FedEx, get it mailed through FedEx in the same, same place, right? Within two to three minutes, once our graphic is created, we should be able to do all the same things without ever leaving the command system. All right, questions. So I'm gonna click done here. Let's go back into command. What questions do you guys have? I see some here on the chat line. Um, Kyle, I'm following along verbatim and things aren't cropping and colors aren't changing. So the third page doesn't auto populate the name and agent info us or auto populate for us. Yes, no. Uh, right now it's not auto populating anything. So my suggestion is you can see here, I actually have a listing presentation. This is where my suggestion is you have to go in right now and do it once. And it is not auto populating yet. That is the next iteration. But if you go in and do it once and you put in your headshot and you put in, you know, all of your details, then instead of going back down here and clicking, clicking the plus button and starting a new listing presentation, I'm simply going to click on this one because I'm assuming I've already given this listing presentation or printed this or done whatever I need with it. And when I go back in here, now I'm just changing maybe names, addresses, rather than having to redo all of the marketing again, page by page. Okay. So there will be some, some double entry right now that we have to do. Anything else? What are the questions on this piece here, guys? All right, give me some examples. How can you use this? Let's talk about how you're going to use this, this marketing. Any ahas? Let me ask it that way. Was there anything that you've learned today on this call that you didn't know about designs that maybe excited you that you want to go dig into? Uh, I, I really like the custom, the, the ability to customize anything and everything. I, I, I think I like that you can just, you can get down to every detail with every graphic you have. And that for me is huge because, um, you know, wording and, and images and stuff that goes a long way with the way you want to present yourself and your branding. So I really like that element of it. Awesome. Yeah. And remember, everything is editable. So if you see a, uh, a just sold postcard and you really like the design of that just sold postcard, just remember, you come over here to this text right here and just change that and say, just sold. Right? Or, or you can change it to just listed. So no matter where you're pulling this from, no matter what library you're pulling this from, realize that's a starting point and then everything can, can be exactly what you want it to be. Right? Now, some people are paying for Canva premium, which is a good little cost. Hopefully this could eliminate that in, in your business potentially. Uh, I have had the question, some people said, well, why would I go here versus Canva? Um, you know, again, you have the tie in from the MLS. And you, you have all your photos there for all these different pieces. You don't have to actually upload every single listing photo into Canva. And in addition, once the snapshots and stuff get better, I mean, if I, I've, done, I've done lots of open house postcards where I've tried to put you know, some neighborhood stats on that card. And it's taken me you know, 45 minutes to go through the MLS and get all those stats and format them. Um, I'm looking forward to these snapshots being upgraded and updated with uh, you know, the right data. And, and I think those will be great tools uh, that, that consumers would like to see as well. 
All right, so it looks like uh, Jeanette learned some things today, which is awesome. Uh, Cindy, yep, timed MLS nationwide is awesome. And remember, it is nationwide, guys. So if you bought a, you know, an investment property or one of your friends you know, uh, has an investment property down in Florida, I mean, if they give you the permission to go market uh, that property, then you have access to those photos there. Right, so same thing, I love that. I love that access to every listing out there, basically, not just, not just my listings. Also, if you're working with an agent, maybe and you're hosting an open house for them, and they tell you, hey, go make your marketing materials, think about it, if this property is listed now, you no longer need to send that agent a Dropbox file or something along those lines. You could simply, you know, I, I if I'm holding the open house on your behalf, I can just go over here and click on KWLS and, and go through it that way. All right, yep, so I see uh, Cindy, she asked, what's the 1 p.m. topic? 1 p.m. topic is gonna be campaigns, which is really revolving around paid social media, uh, trying to generate leads on Facebook, and also organic posting on your Facebook page. Linda said, love the QR neighborhood stats and the remove.bg. I love remove.bg. That was a really cool, uh, a really cool tool that I really like as well. Think about it. I removed the background behind Leroy, right? But imagine you take a picture of your yard sign, right? You can take a picture of your yard sign, cut out the background, and then I might be able to pull in my yard sign and almost like virtually drop it on this listing. I can't do that in the MLS, right? Because it's an MLS violation. But it would kind of be cool to see my for sale sign made with my phone number, another call to action actually on the photo. And I could do that by using remove.bg to remove whatever that was. Okay. Uh, what fo format does Facebook look better, PNG or JPEG? I don't think it matters, Cindy. Um, I don't know the answer to that. If there is one, I've used both and they both appear the same way. Uh, there obviously is no space to lay anything over top of something. So there's really no need to use a PNG because there's nothing behind their graphic, um, but you can post both and they definitely work. All right. All right, guys, well, listen, I hope that was helpful. Uh, biggest takeaway for me is you just have to get in here and play with this a little bit, right? Once you know the clicks from command, it's much easier. So just remember the plus button down here, select social or print right now. Again, we'll have the email marketing materials in there soon go to choose template and then just look around those different materials, play with them, get used to it. Once you learn the clicks and you get used to editing text and dropping some different things in, it gets much easier and much more fun from there. So, okay, anything last? I, I promised I would get everybody out of here on time. Any final questions? Yeah, lastly, I just wanna say thanks, Kyle. Thanks for your time. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be doing a lot more of these here in October um, and we got a bunch of people on, so that's great. I will post the recording of this as well. And if you go in and start playing with it and you have some issues, you know, go ahead and comment on that recording and we'll see if we can uh, support you guys that way. All right. Thank you, uh, Kyle. <laughs> all right, guys. Everyone have a great day. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye.